and and um, we'll cover uh, explore your options, art galleries, co-op galleries, magazines, books, art fairs, strategize to motivate buyers, obtain press coverage, very important, network and strategic alliances, email marketing strategies, and set and reach your goal. So as I said, there's a lot. Um, I'm most grateful to Forbes Library and Faith Ann for the opportunity to be here with you for a second session together. Much appreciated. Um, some little talking points from last time. Remember, if you wait until everything is perfect before taking action on your idea, you end up never taking action. And I lean towards perfectionism, so I know that concept very well. Mm -hmm. Doing something is better than doing nothing. Even if the something isn't perfect, it's better than nothing. You need to market properly and position your marketing material on a consistent basis to be seen by the same audience. Then you need to keep pushing your freshest artwork forward. <clears throat> Doesn't matter what a gift is. What matters is what we do with our gift. Creativity without craftsmanship is like a million times zero. It equals zero. Well, one of the most effective ways to help them move into right brain, your clients, your customers, is to tell them a short emotional true story that they can relate to. In a prior handout, I shared how to figure your cost, artwork, selling price, and profit. It did not factor in your labor, which is a personal journey depending on your lifestyles and values. It's too broad to work it to a large audience that we have tonight. If the price is too high or the purchasing desire not high enough, no sale. Today's profits or yesterday's goodwill ripened. That's from my Thanksgiving Day fortune cookie from the, from the Great Wall. We need to create something we love. Art is not about winning. Art is neither a race or competition. Look around at other artists working the hardest. What do they have? Talent, enjoyment, do the work. The work and only the work is the work. Lack of talent must never be an excuse. You have what you have and no amount of wishing changes it. Hard work, well-directed, passionate, risky, playful work is all we have. There are no shortcuts. Do we have any questions now from uh, last session? <clears throat> I've taken some of your comments on the emails and I'll go over some of them next. And I've integrated them in uh, my uh, uh, discussion tonight. So somebody want to ask if we charge for labor, um, thinking specifically about framing labor. Yes, uh, if you're doing flat art and you're framing, that's it's amount of time, but how much time does it take to paint a piece? or to photograph a piece where we're talking about Newfoundland, if you're gonna be selling a photo from there, you're not gonna be traveling or charging for travel time and airfare. So it's, it's, it's more, art is a labor of love, but time needs to be incorporated in your selling price, but we really can't be punching the clock. Somebody has a shooting ratio of one to eight. In other words, one roll out of eight rolls to get a hit. Um, they pay $8 for a roll of film. So $64 is their cost. Um, so yeah, I would add that in to the price of a photo, but I would go beyond that and say, get better, slow down, make it count. Don't capture your images so rapidly, think, work those, those images to lower your cost of your film. Somebody wants to know about an artist's death or their options for writing into one's will. Yes, I work with estates. Um, can you guarantee that the work's not gonna end up in the trash? No, unfortunately. For potential buyers, 
Uh, there are different areas people wanted, uh, academia. Um, I worked for the largest or one of the largest universities in Manhattan on New York City. And academia is a great um, client base, but it's so diverse. So if you're really into academia, pick a university, pick a college, visit the campus, pick up the periodicals, call the PR, call the development office, have conversations, tell them you want an assignment, you want to sell art, um, new buildings, look for sculpture, um, really got to schmooze. And when you're speaking to somebody, let's say at a university and they say, no, I don't have anything. Do you know anybody that might know someone? Listen to what I said. Do you know anyone that might know someone who could help me? Don't say, who do you know who could help me? You're putting them on the spot. You put them one removed and they may come up and say, yeah, I know someone and they may actually help and they do. Um, so there are a lot of magazines out there. Somebody, uh, some of you wanted to know, pick up the magazine, call the publisher, call the magazine, find out what their wish list is. Some magazines publish twice a year, some more and see if it fits your style or simply go to um, a library, go to Forbes, uh, go to uh, Barnes and Noble, uh, check out the magazines, take a look. And if you see a style of art or photos or the like in those magazines, then maybe it's a potential uh, client. So um, emotion sells art, we talked about. Um, and let's have uh, G, let's have a handout G if we can. So what's your story? It's a 30 second uh, approach. Um, so it's the yellow, hey, tell me about yourself. And there's an art buyer. There's somebody who you really want to sell to, sell yourself. So while that elevator is going down in the building, while you're hanging out in the coffee shop, you've got 30 seconds to slice off your story so that you give the person information, you don't bore them, and you give them a little hook that they may want to hear more, give them your business card if you have one, make a contact. There's also the three minute speech sitting near someone in an airplane. You're not going anywhere. So tell me about yourself. Well, I'm flying from Chicago, going home to visit my mom. I grew up in New England. I studied engineering and then I switched to, and here's a whole story. And you don't have to have it. But I had it and I sat near someone. I was early for a change in the theaters, probably off Broadway. Broadway, I'm usually, you know, right on time and hanging outside or whatever. Um, this is probably off Broadway or who knows, off, off Broadway. I was early and this person reached out to me and I got the gist. I'm hearing a story. Gee, I got acting kind. That person turned into a client, a supporter, an advocate. Who knows? I might not be where I am today without that conversation. So it does work. <clears throat> Create a story for each artwork, not to sell it, yet to support it and when necessary for press and beyond. So if a reporter is calling you about an exhibit or about a particular artwork you have in a show, you want to tell a nice, warm, fuzzy story. Or if you're in a gallery, and I see this all the time, somebody's looking at the artwork, I'll approach them and I'll start telling the story about that artwork. And they, I'm keeping them in right brain. I'm keeping them away from it's a 16 by 20 print in a 20 by 30 frame or something like that. And I'm keeping them in right brain and I'm emotional. I'm telling this story and they're keeping up with the emotion with me and it, it, it helps sales. Um, who are you, an artist or a business person? Some of you are great in creating, but don't have a clue yet 
about business, um, surviving. Um, <clears throat> you can take courses online. You can read a book um, and get the basics. And we're not talking about um, designing an airplane or linear algebra. Um, if you don't have talent, it doesn't matter how good a business person you are, because you're not going to have something that's of quality uh, good enough <laughs> to sell. So there is a action plan, 30 days, 90 days, six months. Certainly, you can't all do this in a week. It's going to take time. So be easy on yourself. Figure out when you want each of these items accomplished. And it changes. Nobody's looking over your shoulder. But it's a, it's a guide to, to help you um, to uh, get there. How are we doing so far? Still with me? All right, we got a lot to cover. Uh, we're going to be talking about art galleries, co-op galleries. That's where I started. Uh, magazines, books, art fairs, online, art licensing, and corporate boardrooms. Um, a good business relationship with a gallery has to do with how you click and what your personal relationship is and how reliable that is. Once you've established a personal connection, you stick with it, and I believe it pays off. Here's 13 steps for your artwork to be noticed by galleries. Here's some of my recommendations. Summarizing, simply sending in a portfolio, it may be ignored for a long time. Call ahead, you may be seen as a time waster. After all, you're not buying art and the gallery has never seen your work. Simply walk in, you risk interrupting or upsetting someone. At the very least, you put the person in the wrong frame of mind to look at your work. I went to Nova Scotia, no, I went to Prince Edward Island, almost two weeks. I was so laid back. Hey man, oh, I had a good time. I was chilled. This person walks in and had high energy. I'm on my way to Northampton, I'm pulling. I want you to look at my work. Uh, who, do you have an appointment? No, I'm right here. Why can't you look at my work? And it was extreme, I'm still talking about it, 15 years ago. Extremely aggressive, really put me off. I want nothing to do ever with this person. Um, email is unlikely to upset anyone but it's really super easy to ignore and hit delete. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go into the 13 steps. So here's my approach, my personal approach, and you probably won't read this anywhere, to a gallery. Why do you want to exhibit at a gallery, a particular one? Oh, because you can sell your work, they can sell it for you, but gee, the gallery's in Conway or it's in Green, what, where, 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 where do you think your work needs to be sold? What, what gives you the right to think you simply can send your work to a gallery, they'll salute you and include it on their walls? So my suggestion is you visit the gallery. You go in without the artwork. You go in and introduce yourself as Jane Doe, John Doe, your real name, and talk and ask about the gallery. See how you're treated as a client, a potential customer. Just walk around, see the atmosphere, see if there's other people, how they're being treated while you're in the gallery, and <clears throat> ask questions. And then leave. Don't say you're an artist. Leave. You've created a link with someone. You've created a link for communication. Maybe your friendship will grow out of it. Once you've left, then and only then do you contact them and say, hey, I was in your gallery the other day. I was impressed the way you handled me. I'd like for you to consider um, including me as, a, as, a, uh, as an artist. In a future exhibit, I have artwork. What's the best way I can share my artwork with you? And this way, you're not putting the person probably has good vibes about meeting you. 
And to me, that's the best way. You've got 20 galleries, guess what? You make 20 trips. The first thing I say to anybody when they send, even people I know or know of, <laughs> they want to exhibit in a gallery. I go, why? You've never been here. Well, I've heard things, but you don't know what the gallery's like. You don't know if we have carpet or bamboo floor. We have bamboo floor, which gives a nice bounce to your step. Nothing wrong with carpet. Um, so that's my two cents. So let me approach this if I didn't share this with you. Do not send your portfolio to every gallery you see advertised. Look in magazines, look online, and identify several galleries that might be a possibility. Each gallery you decide to target needs to meet the following criteria. Sell the mediums that you work in. Photographers do not approach galleries that sell paintings, only paintings. Represent artwork styles that will draw buyers who would also be interested in your style. Abstract artists do not approach realism galleries. Must be reputable. You may have to ask artist friends and do some digging to determine this. When a gallery sells, you receive a commission, but maybe the gallery has a bad record of payment. There are some galleries out there like that. Don't find out the hard way. <clears throat> After you've identified your target galleries, you assess the level and quality of your artwork and the artwork carried by your target galleries. Are your goals realistic? Are you targeting a gallery who represents master painters and you've been painting for a total of six months? This is a difficult step, but you definitely need to target galleries who are at the same level as you. Once you're comfortable that you've, you're ready to show in your target galleries, if you know someone represented by any of the galleries, you probably need to do some networking and meet more people. Ask fellow artists you respect to critique your work. Offer to pay them for it. Take workshops with some of them. It's a great way to meet master artists and get your work noticed. You might know someone who knows them. I'll probably go into this later, but the bottom line, the common denominator in being an artist and, and selling and marketing, marketing artwork is having a conversation. Let me interject about Facebook and, and um, um, Instagram. Uh, they can be dark rabbit holes. I mean, I've been on Facebook for nine years. Do I regret it? No. Would I like all that time back? Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a hungry rabbit. You get to keep feeding it and feeding it and feeding it. And if you stop, your support team, your, your followers stop following you even for a week. So if you wanna look somebody up, you go online, but it isn't necessary for an artist to do that, but it's a good thing. And for those who ask about Facebook ads, don't do it. We'll get into emails and I'm skip, we'll get into emails. And so let me leave it at that. Ask your artist friend about the target gallery. Once you've identified some artists whom you know and or have developed relationships with, you're ready to continue your quest. Ask your friend what it is like to work with such and such a gallery. Do they pay promptly? If you start hearing positive things, then ask your artist friend if the gallery would like your work. Just ask. This is someone who knows you in the gallery. They'll give you an honest answer. It will be easier to accept and hear the truth from your friend than it will be to get a rejection letter from the gallery. You can still approach the gallery, even if your friend doesn't think you should, you just won't have the advantage of the referral. Ask your friend if they would tell the gallery about your work, only if they were positive in the previous step, if your friend agrees. Check the gallery's exhibition calendar. Identify a time where they're not overwhelmed with some huge show. I've had people come in openings, want to show me their work, and I'm like, really? Your friend will probably know what timing is best when the time arrives. 
have the friend call the gallery and casually mention you and your work. This will pique the gallery owner's interest about you. The goal of this call should be for your friend to let the gallery owner know that you'll be sending a portfolio and following up with a phone call. If possible, have your friend send the portfolio. Simply give the portfolios to your friend, ask them to write out a post-it note. This is the artist I told you about and send it or deliver it. Make sure you pay for postage if that's the case. This way the portfolio will have your friend's name on the outside and will get open more promptly. This step is optional because the gallery should be expecting your portfolio at this point. Nice introduction. So send it yourself if it will be an imposition to ask your friend. After the portfolio arrives at the gallery, you probably get a phone call. You've primed the pump and the gallery will likely feel obligated to at least give you a phone call. If you don't get a phone call after about a week, then you need to call them and make sure they actually receive the portfolio. Let them know that you're the artist that so-and-so told you about. At this point, a dialogue should open with the gallery. By the way, I don't sell artwork in the Robert Floyd Gallery. I sell the artists. I learned that a long time ago. Mark Picard, big, big guy, moose photographer. He did it the most smart way I've seen any photographer do it. He pumped me for questions. He'd visit time and time again. He came almost every day the gallery was open. So when somebody came, I said, oh, you just missed Mark. And that was a great segue to sharing stories that Mark and I would share. Um, and I would sell Mark and his personality and his skill set and his, um, his strong set, sense of, of ethics. And certainly the, the artwork stood for themselves, but telling those stories really paved the way for sales. They may still turn down your work, but your discussions will be relaxed, casual, and friendly. If they do turn you down, ask them if they know of any other galleries where your work might be a better fit. We often provided other gallery names because it's difficult to reject someone and we did truly want to be helpful. Um, having said that, we always have referred good photographers, good artists uh, to the Hosmer Gallery and Forbes Library. And I believe they look at portfolios in October. And um, it's, it's, it's a four-star gallery. And I'm proud to see a lot of my students uh, having exhibited there. <clears throat> We've had many artists thank us for pointing to other galleries who accepted the work. And that's cool. Enter a juried show hosted by one of your target galleries group shows. You will get your work seen by the gallery owner and get to meet them at the reception. Of course, this only works if you get into the show. If the gallery has a frame shop, then go to one of the artwork, get one of your artworks framed, kind of sneaky way for them to get your artwork. But it, it, it works and it's fair and why not? Um, key points to keep in mind when going after exhibits in your area, you know, three points. Talk how the exhibit will benefit the location in which you're exhibiting. Remember, nobody does anything without understanding the clear benefit they will receive out of taking action. I'm a sculpture and I have a unique style and nobody has seen it in the public before. And, and this will obtain a lot of good following publicity for your gallery. Therefore, every reason you give for displaying your work you should have a direct and understandable benefits to the owner of the location. Two, find, well, there's four points actually. Find locations to exhibit by looking at your past client list. You should already have a list of thrill clients, many of whom it may own establishments in which exhibiting your work would be a perfect match. It's much easier to sell someone an idea of exhibiting a work if they've already invested in some of it themselves. If you're having trouble closing the sale, you know, getting them to agree to exhibit your work, <clears throat> get the work exhibited in their location with the understanding 
that if they're not thrilled with the display for any reason, you take it down. Remember that people tend to have trouble making decisions because they're afraid they will make the wrong decision. So work with the gallery owner, teamwork. Remember to use lift cards. Those are those little skinny cards that you see in tourist bureaus when you travel around. But if you have an exhibit, have lift cards. It's not enough to just have an exhibit. You must have something on each exhibit that your potential clients can take home with them. The lift card is the perfect thing. On one side of lift card or photographs and testimonials and on the other perfectly worded copy designed to get them to take action right away. Some galleries don't allow it. I don't for different reasons. I want to be, <coughs> I want to be responsible for keeping in touch with the client. I don't want them to walk away with something they think they can call the artist for. Some artists don't have answering machines. Some artists don't have anybody answering their phones. Some artists don't know how to answer the phone. Hello? Oh, well, I'm busy right now. Can I call you back? No sale. Co-op galleries, that's how I started. Um, look at shows that are going on now all over the place. Um, craft shows. The Big E simply had, had one recently. Northampton, uh, uh, Smith um, uh, uh, High School has one. Uh, there's one up in um, Greenpoint. They're all over. And see if your work would, you want it on a table or you want to hang it on racks or your work really wouldn't fit there. But now's the time to check it out for next year. Uh, art licensing. This is where you take your image and somebody pays you an entity, uh, a fee for usage, for one time, for uh, one usage, for usage for a year. Um, 20 odd years ago, 25 years ago, there was a photographer who had a photo of a bluebird in a snowstorm and the bird was standing on one leg and it just looked mean. And that image got on coffee mugs, t-shirts, towels, cards, you name it. And um, a lot of royalties for that. Um, ASMP, American Association of Magazine Photographers has a book and has, I don't know how much they have online. I used to be a part of their uh, ethics uh, back in New York um, about copyright. Uh, law. Um, I would look into them as a source to learn how it is, how you could license uh, your work and, and, and if it isn't um, uh, is in handy, you can probably find it um, in a library or online. Um, so it has commercial saleability, the artist imagery, publishing use, book covers, packaging, the music industry, um, unexpected major usage catches us by surprise. We never know what a really strong but unexpected image might find an application for. <clears throat> I taught in Maine for summer. I flew down to do a wedding for a client at the UN. And as we were crossing the street at the UN, the little bridesmaid was holding the, the veil of the bride and stuck her little finger in her nose and I captured the image. It's adorable. It is so cute, but I just can't take myself to put it out there for licensing, um, even if I did get a, a, a release. Um, I, I, I had a assignment in Fiji Islands at the time, to one of the top 10 resorts in the world and one of the top tennis um, resorts in the world. And I photographed a person working there with a blanket over her legs to him in a wheelchair to imply that she was disabled. And I got a great shot of her hitting the ball and, and it looked good, great advertising. And she came up to me and she said, I know I signed a motto release, but I don't think it's fair to the public because I'm not disabled. But we're representing disabled people. So no, no harm, no foul. 
she thought it was unfair. And uh, as strong as that photo was, I didn't let the client see it. I have it in my portfolio though. Um, any questions on galleries? It's I have, yeah. I have a question on that book you mentioned for licensing. Can you um, say it, it? It's it's A S M P. It's American Society of Magazine Photographers, and they're the most hip association for photography. Um, although there are others, and photography has more licensing. I guess somebody could paint an image, but you'd be creating a photo of that image. So generally they have a, a big umbrella. Um, so they, they wrote the book on pricing your work, on uh, what to sell if you're selling to a magazine that has 25,000 and under subscription, what to charge for a photo if it's over 25,000, what to charge if it's over 100. It's amazing. Soup to nuts, they have it. So I do know they have anything you'd ever want to know about licensing. Just simply, and we have we have it here at the gallery. Just get your hands on that handbook, even if you have to pay for it. Is it the same that the Graphic Arts Guild has published years ago, or something like it? I I don't know. I imagine they did too, but I would hang my hat on ASMP. Okay, thank you. Cheers. Anybody else? I have a question. Yeah. Uh, you uh, oh, just stepping back a little bit. Yeah. When you said uh, if you pick a target gallery and you go in and you have a conversation and you start a relationship and then you leave, you don't have your portfolio. Right. And then you um, contact them. How would you contact them? Oh, I, I would call them. On the phone. I would call them on the phone. Not email. Because no, because it's so easy to blow an email off. Yeah, yeah, I would yeah. Call them on the phone and have an energetic voice. And I was the person who was there a week or two ago, and you treated me well. I really like your gallery. I particularly like whatever. And I, I do want you to know that I happen to be an artist and I have work. So it's hard to get that in. And who knows? The person's more respectful could be receptive oh i remember you you had a friend that lived in my hometown and you know whatever mm -hmm. and so you listen you know it's a conversation and again keyword conversation email is not a conversation yeah thank you cheers and i respect somebody who does that i really do but it really rubs me the wrong way it's like taking fingernails and going across a chalkboard when somebody shows up here I, ugh. Um, anyway, I know other galleries are fine with it. I'm not. And I'll bend over backwards working with, with the person helping them and all that. But, uh, um, yeah. Anybody else? Okay. Let's move. Let's move on. I I'd like, um, handout I presented. <clears throat> So this is strategy to motivate buyers, be profitable and more importantly, be happy, have the right attitude. Once you feel, I mean, I know photographers who are or artists, um, mostly photographers who are just depressed. And, um, you know, I don't see them well doing well in, in, in group shows. When people approach them, they're just troubled, it appears. And, um, you know, when somebody asks you how you're doing, great. I had a good week. You might be not telling the truth, but so what? They don't want to hear, oh, you should hear the week I had. First of all, nobody wants to hear it. I was in Manhattan in a post office opening my mail and there was a person next to me and there was somebody on the phone using four letter words and the person next to me, much older person at the time, said to me, the language, and I said, that person must have problems. <laughs> problems? 
I've got problems. And I went, stop, I don't know you. Oh, I felt so badly. I just stopped the conversation because I really didn't want to hear it because um, it was a complete stranger, but I made a culpa to, to that person. Um, once you feel complacent and have an attitude that you don't need to learn anything further, you will fall behind the pack. Don't wait for business, take action. Buy this to enhance your life and make your life better by seeing it every day. Mark from Haydenville asked me a question and I gave a lame answer. He asked me a question about value in one of the handouts. I think I said something about, you know, art heals. Yeah, okay, but our art can inform, uh, it can be functional, it can be informative. So there, there are many usages, uh, many values uh, for, um, I hope I answered the question better, Mark. Uh, for, for, for value of art. Selling. You can stop trying to sell your art and learn how to guide authentic conversations with people to increase sales. Um, I will say now, oh, I really like that piece. Where are you going to hang it? Almost puts them on edge. Ooh, I, 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 I don't know. I, I can move my artwork. I'll give one of my artworks to my cousin Lenny. They solve their problem. Versus hearing, oh, I got no place to put it. And, and, and I've seen photographers, artists say, you want to buy it? They, they walk away like they were a bowling ball hitting a pin. I've never seen people move so fast away. And so you kid, you kid around, you ready to do it? I'll walk it to your car. Imagine waking up tomorrow to it. You know, keep them right brain, keep them happy. A plan to sell art without a plan is a plan to sell no art. It's not easy. You must have a clear and concise written one page plan to make money selling your art that is current. Like using a map. It's useless unless you can find your current coordinates. Where are we? Here are some ideas to get us started. <laughs> can you update your portfolio? I know artists who keep the same portfolio for years and years and years because it worked. Excuse me, evolve, update it, put in new images, put in new work, create two portfolios. We're big on themes in the gallery. Um, and we, I advise uh, to have separate portfolio boxes uh, for different themes. And one thing may only have three, another one may have nine. Show me your best work. Okay, here's, here's my nine images for a theme. Do you have anything else? Yeah, I've got three images. Don't put in four five or six that aren't as good as the three because they will know you don't have anything better at home. Heck, we had one great person start off, uh, Roger Lobdell, a uh, great friend and printer. Um, he started off with three, five images. No other photographer did that. And we worked together and he created nine. I know, for, I know artists come in with too much artwork. Um, are the, there are vendors you wanna try? Different supplier for, for clay, for framing materials, for paper, um, whatever your shtick is in, uh, in, in your art. Are there any vendors you might want to try? Is there anything you can improve on your website, Facebook? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the website is, boy, I don't give my website enough. I mean, if I gave up on Facebook and Instagram, I'd be fine. But listen to what I say, not what I do. I don't promote myself as one needs to promote themselves. I'm in it for you. I have a gallery for you. I promote artists. That's my life. I want to thank everybody for the rich and adventurous, fun time I had in Manhattan as a photographer. Thank you, Lord. Namaste. I'm, I'm, I'm golden to promote you. Promoting me gets in the way of promoting you but I do know how to promote you better and certainly better than I promote myself. Uh, Facebook, 
it's constant feeding. Um, I, I can make an argument, it's not worth it. If you put as much time into Facebook as you do, as you would putting into making cold calls, visiting galleries, going to openings. I think I mentioned that somewhere coming up about going to openings. Just get it out there. In Manhattan, when I had over 2,250 assignments in 10 years, I was constantly, oh, yesterday I met the governor of and you know, yesterday I met and today and I'm on my way right. It was a constant talking. Even if I went into the woods to photograph wildflowers, it was constant talking, whoever happened to listen. Sometimes only one person heard that story, but I was constantly sharing. I look back on it, it wasn't a plan. Are the things your competition is doing that you're interested in doing, having cool paper choices, a blog? I'm wanting to, I need a nudge. I want to get into a blog. We've got 20 years under our belt as a gallery. We've been in months and five times. No matter what your art is, even um, <coughs> visual, oh, not visual, oh, video is a better word for that. Um, Munson in April has a group show that invites all types of artwork. And it's a must to, to be, to see it or to participate in it. But a blog, you're telling your story, not necessarily giving advice. You don't give advice, right? You only give an opinion. Is there a way to expedite your workflow? Turn off Facebook, <laughs> create more, stop petting the dog so much or the cat. Uh, do you wanna try out a new technique? So you fail, artists need to fail. If we don't, we're not trying hard enough. I think Theo Roosevelt, show me, somebody who doesn't fail and I'll show you somebody who doesn't try, something like that. Think about what else you can do to market your artwork. Three biggest reasons for your artwork success over another is marketing, marketing, marketing. Your artwork is you. I talked about uh, we sell the artists. And if we don't like the artists, even the art, <clears throat> there's a story. Um, I, I belong to the Sierra Club Photo Selection Committee in the early seven, mid seventies, let's call it. And I didn't know what I was doing then. And wow, I don't know how I got on it, probably through some girlfriend or something that knew somebody. I think that's the story. And there was one person who took over as chair and I really, I quit. I just couldn't stand the personality. And I ran into the person in uh, Wickford and a uh, big art show and sells their work all over New England, all kinds of stores and gift shops, real cutesy stuff, bears crawling up trees. I could make a mint. I didn't like the person. Gallery hadn't opened yet. No, I really got to like the person really be a fan of the person, genuine fan, or I'm not gonna bother. It's not worth it. Um, think about what else you can do to market your business. Your staff to have good online presence. Okay, it is important. Make sure you are happy with your website if you have one and happy with how uh, you and your business are presented to the public. There's things called, if anybody has a, a store, um, brick and mortar, whatever it's called. Um, you know, uh, there's Yelp, there's um, Google Business, there's all these freebies. Well, they have a listing of you, but if you don't connect to it, it looks like nobody's at the wheel. So you wanna search all these. I looked up, oh, I have it here, I'm interjecting. I do this, sorry, it's, I was gonna save this for the end. Um, there's a countrywide woodcraft store run by the Mennonites in Russell. So I wanted a piece of furniture. I went to visit them and I saw their artwork. And the piece I wanted was probably as much from my used van at the time. So I decided it was a little too rich for my blood. Well, somebody, the owner sent me this note with a photo of his family. I've trimmed the family off, no offense. and I. I, I went online today just to see if it was Mennonite and not Amish. And 
he's connected to things I never knew that you register your business. So you want to maybe check out this place and who knows, you might fit in. Anyway, hello, Robert. It was an honor to have you stop by and visit us today. Welcome back anytime, exclamation point. We welcome you to join our family. He's got his family of raving fan customers. We love to help you with your need of a solid, well-built piece of furniture. Let us know when you want it, not if you want it. God bless your week and his signature. Are you kidding me? I still have it. I was so impressed. So let that be an example of what you might do to somebody who visits you and gets your name or uh, who buys from you. Your customer base, those who have sold, is golden. And we treat them like nothing. They've already bought from us. Why would they want to buy again? Because they believed in us. They want to collect us. They want an excuse to come back. Stay true to yourself. Know what makes you happy and don't change what you love only to grow your business. Again, there's a photographer I know, an artist who said, I have to figure out what the men want on these street fairs and then create it to sell it to them. And it's like, no, sell what's in your heart. The heck with the general public. You want people who love your work. You want your work. You want to love your work. You want them to love the work that you love. That's what I wanted to say. <clears throat> Clients will be able to detect your passion or lack thereof for the business. I mean, I've had visitors walk out of here and go, whoa, and, and sometimes buy. They, they, and we start talking about anything and engaging and people like to talk like me. People like to talk, it does something with the brain, it releases a chemical. So you want people talking. And if you are shy in talking, I shared with one, wasn't picking on you, I'm sorry. You got a cat, practice on your cat. Practice the 30 second elevator speech. Practice the three minute theater um, speech on your cat or dog. <clears throat> Give them a treat after. Plus your artwork will reflect how you feel. So stick to doing what you love. Test the waters, think outside the box. Don't wait for business to come to you and have the right attitude regardless of any negatives. I'm excited. Be profitable and more importantly, be happy. I have an idea. You were on here last time. You wore a hood and your artwork was behind you on shelves and they were what you made from bottles. Are you here today? Yeah, I'm here. There you are. Good, you get there. You, um, I have an idea for you. Great. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't worked it out. I haven't worked it out, but the old truism is true. There's no value in free advice. But if you were my client, and I'm asking you to be my client, but if you were my client, I would want you to visit Dakin Animal Shelter. I'd want you to go in and talk to a person who does adoptions. I'd want you to get the literature, feel how it's treated to be a, a potential person who adopts. And then every one of your artwork behind you, name it, Sherry, Jimmy, Josh, Luke, and give a personality for them and don't sell it. Have people adopt it like Cabbage Patch Dolls. <laughs> How much do you how much do you position your artwork? May I ask? Um, you know the little pieces like a pretty inexpensive, I think, between one hundred and fifty. What I've sold for so far, and I haven't done any gallery stuff. It's just been either I had a couple yeah. openings in my apartment in South Beach. People have seen my. I love here South there. Beach. Huh. I love South Beach. Oh, really? Yeah, it's. I think potentially it's a good market, but I'm. I'm. I'm a great talker one to one, but I'm shy about getting stuff out there. Okay. Um, 
But it's a but stick. Yeah. You can you can position it, and we're going to cover this. Thinking of you, you can you can get PR for it because you're the only one doing it, and and so that's free. And and you can get PR in South Beach, and you can get PR here. In fact, I know a publicist would help you in South Beach if that's where you want to go. But you you then go into an email campaign, hmm. and you and maybe maybe once a month you go to all your email people and say, "Here's Luke. Luke has this personality, and you share with the people, and you're going <laughs> to tell Luke." Anyway, that's my, that's my gift to you. Thank you. <laughs> I think there's a lot to it. Think outside the box. Yep. Okay. I, I'd like um, I like uh, handout J. So these eyes come. These eyes. These ideas. Hello. These ideas come to me quickly. I mean, just en um, passant. And. Uh, I, I um, kind of do brainstorming. I don't throw any negativity on it, uh, but, but the idea can be hitchhiked off into a better idea. So the fundamental differences between advertising and public relations. When advertising, you select the precise words you want to communicate. You determine the exact page, size, and date of the advertisement, the specific media property in which the ad will appear, and critically, the words and visuals. Public relations, which is sometimes referred to as an unearned media, is more of a dog's breakfast and involves reaching out to an objective reporter, editor, not subjective reporter, editor or producer with the facts and figures about you, your artwork or service, and hoping the journalist finds the information of interest to the readers. You sell it to them, viewers or listeners. But, and this is a huge but, is entirely up to the journalist what is written and when it appears. As a result of these two fundamental differences, advertising is used to create awareness while PR is used to enhance credibility. PR depends upon, listen. remember, I had the flashing light products. I got PR all over the place. New York Times, Daily News, um, TV. I was on Good Morning America and I knew it was coming. And when they talked about my product, I gushed, literally my eyes teared the water went straight and wet my glasses and then go down my cheek. And it's never happened before. Um, as a result of the case, okay, PR depends upon listening to the conversation and understanding the who, what, when, where, and why, and how of engaging in the discussion. You want to learn more about who, what, when, where, how, why, and all that. Look at captions and newspapers. They all follow pretty much that format and they all squeeze it in two sentences or so. For those wanting to broaden your cre creative skills, read the daily newspapers for a great resource. Provides an easy and expensive way to see how many different angles a news article can take by comparing the same story in New York Times and Wall Street Journal. Okay, I picked two top ones. Then read editorials and letters to the other regarding the story. Do that every day, and you may, anyway, if you're in the PR business, and you see how the same story can be approached in various ways. And that's the key, how a reporter can sell it to their reading, their readers. And I've had incredible stories. I've been written up. The Floyd Gallery has been written up more than any art gallery in a 20 mile radius in the last 20 years. And I've got the newspaper clippings to prove it. Um, yeah, it works. <laughs> Essential for press coverage, who, what, where, when, and why. Any questions on this? And it takes practice. And you say, um, um, I'm so-and-so, I'm an artist. I have some new work I'm making available to the public. Um, here's my website, or I'm going to be at this show or gallery, 
or I'm going to be out um, painting people, photographing people, um, sculpting people, I mean, whatever the um, your art is, and, and sell it to the reporter how unique it is and how their clients really want to hear about it. Okay. Okay, let's have J.2 uh, handout, please. <clears throat> This is something everybody can do. Email strategy, signature, salutations. Don't put sincerely, Joe. All the best, Rachel. Um, boring. Um, you're an artist. Make your salutation different. I have four emails and each one is different. Um, I use them for different reasons, but this is an example. And what I recommend other people do today, tomorrow, do it. You can change it. Oh, but I don't want to lay it all on my friends. If you're not going to tell your friends you're serious about an artist, how are you going to tell the public? They're going to take you seriously. And after a while, you don't care what's at the bottom of your email. You're, you've been sending them out so much you don't care. So anyway, at the beginning, Robert Floyd, Floyd photo at iCloud, that's basic. So I wanted to work on that. Cheers, Robert. Robert Floyd photography, Floyd photo at iCloud.com and artwork in every home. I think I got that from Willie Susson, the, the bank robber who said he famous because he had his photo in every post office or something. So I took it from him and tweaked it. Uh, here's another one. I made this last week thinking of you all. Cheers, Robert. Robert Floyd Photography, email address. One of the tasks of artists supply people with companions and handing uh, Marco, and I got this from Julius Lester in one of his emails once upon a time. Uh, here's another one. This is the nitty gritty. This is the gallery one. This is the serious one. This isn't the one on one one. Cheers, Robert. The email, Robert Floyd Photo Gallery and Learning Center, 2 E Street, Route 10, Southampton. By appointment, COVID, comma, safe, clean, and fun. I was in a good mood that night. Visit our website. Here's the phone number. Here we are on Facebook. Here's Instagram. I mean, the whole kitchen sink. I'm also town moderator. Cheers, Robert, town moderator at charter.net, moderator, town of Southampton, OTM, meaning we have an open, open town meeting and there's 4,591 voters in town. So officially as a town moderator, that's what I send out. So <clears throat> I want you all to do this. I see no reason not to. If you already have something, fine. If you want to email me and send it off, bounce it off me, what the heck? I invite you to do so. I will weigh in with opinion, not advice. Okay, this next one is network and strategic alliances. Relationship marking. I talked about this uh, the other day about uh, a, a children's clothing store. <sighs> Excuse me. And how photography of the kids wearing the clothes that the store sells and put it in the window was great for the customers, for the photographer, for the store. That's an easy example. It starts with creating a relationship with your clients. If your client refers you to someone else, that's a hundred times more effective than having a hundred people see your ad. And for an ad to work, yet they have to say what, four or five times in the same publication or, or not. Also, you can talk to business owners who share the same clients. Um, flat art, talking to framers. You may be able to find common interests and run a co-promotion or find a way to help each other out. I had a co-promotion once with uh, the big red frame, uh, custom framing in the East Hampton, Mass. We had a giveaway and it was very successful. You may want to consider an artwork service, trade, barter. And I'll scratch my back, you scratch mine. You want to get on gallery email announcement lists? Here we go. 
go to gallery openings, museum shows, especially for local regional art and artists, talks, tours, open studios, and other known art hangouts. I went to every single opening back when. I mean, it was silly. Um, I stopped, um, but I, I schmoozed. I got to see the same people. It was great. And I got to learn, and people would come to my gallery and hang out. That didn't hurt. Okay, I've got use a ranking system. That's going to take up. That's going sorry, to take up. I didn't quite catch that. That's Siri. Sorry, Siri. Sorry, Siri. That's going to take up a lot of time. Let me summarize it. You you want to take your um, ranking system of your contacts. The one those you've worked with I them. Progressive Siri. You have worked with them before. Two, you haven't worked with them before, but they know you and you know about them. Three, you don't know them, but they know you and they like what they see. Four, you know them, but they don't know you. You know they buy the type of art you do. And five, you don't know them and they don't know you. Those are five rough groups. You might want to break down your, your contacts in those groups and you're going to treat them differently. <clears throat> you want to immerse yourself in your local art communities. Um, I mentioned this, go to galleries, openings. Um, don't go to one or two events and think you've done your duty. Go to plenty and keep on going. If you're the shy type, you don't necessarily have to talk to anyone while you're there, although striking up a conversation every now and again is better. Either way, the upshot of repeatedly seeing and being seen is that you begin to see the same people over and over again. Sooner or later, you find out who they are. Conversations eventually break out. You may see them in, in a store. Hey, you were at the opening. You share information. You gradually figure out how to navigate the art scene like everybody else. Opportunities gradually begin to present themselves. Perhaps an event, greater, perhaps an even greater benefit to getting out there and being seen in addition to being known is that you demonstrate your desire to participate, to get involved and show you're serious about becoming successful as an artist and committed to doing whatever is necessary to achieve that end. So many artists think all they have to do to get shows is to send occasional emails, casual social network, periodically hit up the local area galleries for shows, invite random art people to look at the websites, et cetera. They think all they have to do is hunker down in a studio and that opportunities for exposure will mysteriously appear out of nowhere. <clears throat> this, if I make it, they will come approach to getting shows is guaranteed not to get you anywhere fast. And in fact, will likely get you nowhere at all. There's no easy solution, folks, and no substitute for getting yourself and your art out in public, frequently locating local art venues and events and meeting as many people as possible along the way, wherever and whenever you can. Even a successful show or two does not mean you're ready to approach the best galleries, either in your area or anywhere else. <clears throat> you progress step by step and show by show. That's how artists get known. Are you beginning to see how this hierarchy works? Excellent. For those of you who need a little more in the way of explanation, let's take a moment to example how and why the best galleries come to show the artists they do. To begin with, these galleries do not randomly select artists who happen to walk through the door or make contact in casual ways, like by email, mail, or phone, Hardly any galleries anywhere do that. They don't even select artists based solely on whether they like the art or even how good it is. That's the shocking part. Your art can be really good. I mean, really, really good. And prominent galleries will not show you no matter what. Why? In order to show at such a gallery, you and your art have to be a total match. The quality of your art is only one step in a process. That's also your resume, your reputation, your experience, accomplishments, profile, and standing in the art community. How easy you are to work with, your previous sales history, the quality of critical reviews of your past shows, and much more. These are the top galleries. 
Simply put, the best galleries show the best artists. That's why they're the best galleries. Who are the best artists, you ask? They're artists who've proven themselves over time, who started at the beginning showing wherever they could, painstakingly building their resumes one line at a time, establishing consistent track records of successful shows, convincing those who count that they're committed to making art, et cetera. In short, they're artists with firmly established reputations. And here's the important part. They establish those reputations themselves. And here's the really important part. Galleries don't establish artists' reputations. They only enhance them. So somebody asks you about your art, fine, but save any kind of hard sell for later. Good relations that take time to develop. In turn, or volunteer local galleries or nonprofit organizations that are involved with art, similar to yours, or also at local museums. <clears throat> Join art societies, fellow artists. Um, not my cup of tea, but I see how they'll help you, especially you might be shy. These are excellent ways to meet people and get involved with the local art community. In turn, volunteer to work with established artists whose art you like and respect. My last point, regularly update your website, social networking pages, and overall online profile. These days, pretty much the first thing anyone does who's interested in your art and wants to know more, so look you up online. Not totally necessary, but that will happen. Um, almost finishing up. And email campaigns, and then we go to um, your homework. Email campaigns. Email blasts are the way to keep in touch with previous clients and reach out to new ones. Every artist needs to be using email as a marketing tool. It's the way we rock. At the very least, send emails regularly to current and previous clients as a way of keeping them informed about your latest work. And with the right type of list, email campaigns can be a great way to acquire new clients. But the key, I want you to get out of this hot tip, is no matter how classy or high end you feel your art is, never ever do any marketing that doesn't have an offer in it with a deadline. Yeah, don't simply educate them. Look what I'm doing. <clears throat> I'm lowering my prices. I'm having inventory sale for 10 days by 15%. And in 15 days, it's over. The first 10 people, who respond will get free framing. I'm making this up. Um, send me your e on Facebook, send me your email and we'll give you 10 tips on how to cook in my design cookware, how to photograph bumblebees, how to paint canvases, something that isn't your artwork, freebie, something that you can acquire, not a bottle of wine, but something that's cheap. But hey, it's worth giving them my email address. That's how you do it. But if you broadcast, simply send emails out with information, it's not going to work. By, but the key I want you to get out, OK, I did it. Always give your target market a reason to take action now. Otherwise, they're going to forget it. By the next email, it's gone. Sign your emails. We talked about that. Signature subtle. We covered that. We covered that. Um, it can be something as simple as lifestyle art or something more creative like a passion for, for portraits. Of course, the information in your signature also makes it easier for people to contact you. Two sentences. If someone receives an email from you and wants to call you or view your website, they can have the information at their fingertips. Never give anyone an excuse not to contact you by making them work to get your contact information. <clears throat> I wanted back when, when I was drinking them, um, ice cream float or whatever. And I went to Westfield, I was in Westfield and I Googled it for restaurants, fantastic. And I clicked on three, I clicked on the fourth one and, and I'm, I'm over here, guys giving me directions and I'm going crazy, you know, like this is really good. Um, they were in New Jersey, they didn't have their address. On, on their site. I couldn't believe it. I mean, not that it would go in New Jersey, but it was a great example. 
So the last um, handout we'll look at for questions, set and reach your goals. This is all that we've covered, um, understanding your target audience, niche markets, network alliances, it's all there. You have the handout. Um, I have more to share, but I think looking at our eight o'clock deadline, I, I think questions are more important right now. Um, you might want to set a production goal, get distractions away from the studio, um, get away from using your laptop, your phone when you're working, if possible, um, kind of, kind of um, suck it up and, and, and be more efficient. So let's hear. Who's got a three-part question? Two part, one part. You can unmute yourself to ask a question. There was one in the chat from Melissa about getting publicity. Okay. Melissa, you there? Yes, sir, I am. What? I, I've done lots of shows. My question is, how do you get, um, like, when you reach out to reporters, what's the best way to get them interested, to get that hook that makes them more interested than not? Unless you're on a personal basis with the reporter, uh, email. Okay. And, like, and what would you think? And, would okay, say what, I, what I would do is I would send out a press release. I'm sorry, I, I was talking over you. I would I would send out a press release to your email PR list of all the newspapers, of all the magazines, of anybody who could write about you. And eventually they're going to answer. <clears throat> When I was flying back when, I would write postcards uh, and mail them. I would get the postcards first, go in Arizona, and when I write these postcards of people I never even knew, and mail them with an, even a New York stamp when I came back. And I did this for years. And I finally called one. It was Boston University, and it was the New York office. You're the one who's been sending me postcards for two years, and I got the account. So you want to... Um, <clears throat> So sow the seeds. You want you want to let the people know that you're in this for a long term, but you want to put the who, what, where, when, how, why in, and you want to put in a hook that you're going to be showing a new artwork or a new series, or this is your 10th anniversary, or um, something kind of warm and fuzzy, some little story that will have that reporter say, hey, I think my audience would like to read that. Brilliant. Thank you. Cheers. Anybody else? I have a question. Yeah. Um, I sold a picture for a lot of money to somebody who was the head of a college art association, the college art association, and but I didn't know her. I was I was at I was at the conference, and I've sent her a couple of emails. But after listening to you, I, I feel like I should be making a connection with her, but I don't yes. know her. I, I, this is brilliant. What a great example. Um, fantastic. Send her a card. Um, I taught the art of the interview, leaving corporate life as a, as a photographer, because I was so busy in corporate life being interviewed in interviews. I actually taught it on a college level. And um I would say to the people, when you get an interview, when you have an interview with somebody, send them a card, send them a nice card. Nobody does this. So go, go to, a, go to a card shop, get a nice arty card. Uh, and, and, or if you make cards, whatever you buy cards and send it to them saying, uh, it's a, it, I, I remember you. Uh, I trust you're enjoying my artwork. Um, I didn't know you were associated or didn't know you were part of the, the art association. I'm expanding and exhibiting now. And uh, can I keep you on my mailing list? 
might you know somebody that knows someone you know you're not putting them on the spot but i would milk it uh-huh okay that, that's a golden gift that's like that person sitting near me in the theater and it happened to be the, their daughter was the director of the play and um i can't tell you the benefits from that conversation and i didn't sit there and go oh. you know and i yeah you so follow up Keep those business cards. Whenever you get somebody's business card, put the date on it. So when you get a business card, who the heck is this? Oh, November 30th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Okay. But I would follow up on that personal uh, connection. Um, and if there's any, I'm making this up, but if there's any shows, uh, exhibits that this art association is a part of, go to every one meet the person and, and you know see them in in, re, in public and shake their hand or fist bump them okay thank you cheers i have a little item to share i put it in the chat um because robert mentioned the hosmer gallery so um the schedule of when we're looking at work is all discombobulated from the pandemic and all the postponements that we had. So if you want to just get an email saying when the applications are open, you can just sign up on that list that I put in the chat. The Hosmer Gallery is the coolest gallery it's a, it, to be seen, to see and to be seen. Um, it, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Um, the, wor the work is presented generally to artist or maybe more but it, it's 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 well done it's well done i'm i'm very impressed and i have been and i've recommended it to my um, consultation students and and good photographers uh that if they want to you know get something under the belt uh, at least you know make a presentation be seen be seen by the selection committee not necessarily you know be seen in the exhibit Stephen, you had your mic off. You uh, have any questions? You still? Um, with me? Yeah, I was uh, wondering. So, is it um, is it possible to, in today's market, make a living, comfortable living, as a flat artist without uh, going through the starving artist phase? He's shaking his head. No, keep your day job. <laughs> <laughs> I made it as I did, but I I was on assignment and failure wasn't an option and i never looked at the bottom line and i never let anybody look at my finances it would tell me you're nuts no quit give it up and i refused to give it up uh no regrets um but if i i mean it's tough um the people who exhibit in outdoor shows and indoor shows to be successful you're going to be almost doing it every weekend continuous and you know ee, 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 ee. that's a lifestyle you want hallelujah but it's 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 tough i heard few of you say you charge a lot well then it goes with the quantity of how much how many you're selling um and maybe the thing to do is to get your work up there where you're charging quite a bit and you don't have to make or or, or sell as as many but uh, it, it's difficult to make a living. It's difficult to break even because artists aren't business people and they skip steps and they don't wanna know for marketing. It's too busy. All I wanna do, all I wanna do is have some fun. All they wanna do is have fun and go to, go to a few galleries and shows and, and, and get compliments or, or on Facebook. Somebody I see said, oh, I get all these compliments on Facebook. How many buy? None. Well, hello. That's false encouragement. I have a um, quick follow-up question to the last question. I thought. How you do you? Uh huh. Sorry. I thought, I thought you might. Go ahead, Melissa. Um, how with everything being email nowadays, do you have any suggestions on how to? Um, 
get addresses. I have an opportunity to meet a publisher that I've been trying to get into for a couple of years, and I'm going to actually meet the um, the the person who buys stuff. So, how would I find her her actual address instead of just her email to follow up on? Um, well, a but but I'm, I'm hearing this. She this she belongs to a company that has an address. Yes. So you you Google it. You Google the comp company's name, and there's the address. Okay. And you just in, put in, it in the, in the old days when we needed email addresses. We would call the publication at night, so the night the night cleanup crew would answer the phone, and we we smooth talk them to giving us their email address. Now you can Google it and get it online. Survival. Thank you. Cheers. So I want you to take this last handout seriously. Otherwise, it's going to collect dust, get buried in your desk. Uh, this is your, your, your link uh, to going up to the next level. I guarantee you put time and energy in this. Your artwork is going to go up to the next level. Um, you're going to take yourself seriously. We've cut a lot of ground. And, and consider that this is the marketing um, workshop. We had a how to sell your art as, as artwork um, two years ago, and we had 45 people in person. Uh, so both of them are important, uh, but you're involved with the marketing. And I don't know, maybe some of you were involved with the, uh, the selling workshop and uh, tip your hand and say hello if that's the case. And any any more questions, ideas, concerns? <coughs> uh, I have a question. Yeah. Um, I wanted to. I just sent something out on the chat. I was wondering if anybody in this group would like to get together to um, sort of follow up with each other with progress on on this workshop, just to get together to I don't know, share whatever. If you want to email good. me, my email's on the thing. <laughs> okay, that that's a, um, w w what I would do is I would ask you to to email me and I would keep okay. it, I can't see chat. You know, it's like I gotta bend over and I gotta light in my eyes. Um, two years ago, I offered everybody in the room an opportunity to come in groups for free for no charge to sit around the desk and uh, take it to the next level or massage some of these ideas. And, and I, I thought that was really cool. Came the holidays, because this was November, Thanksgiving, came Thanksgiving, Christmas, and then the beginning of the year, and I could see COVID was coming, and then we were in quarantine in March, so it never went down. But I, 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 I do like that. I would love to at least have a newsletter or a different newsletter that I would send out to everybody with answers to your questions. So I would consider that. So if anybody's interested, do send me an email and I'll organize options. Is that okay. fair? Yeah, thank you. Cheers. Um, this is Leonora speaking. I want to uh, make people aware of the Deerfield Deer Valley Arts Association, which is in Northfield, just a few miles south of the border with New Hampshire, Northfield, Massachusetts. And they have very, it's a beautiful gallery. It exists since a long time. And I think they have a, a following. Membership is cheap, nice. Um, they are open again uh, in public receptions. They sell. They hired me to make a presentation some years ago. And um, boy. They, that's some association up there. They they, yeah. they sell in their gallery. Yeah, but uh, I, I want to qualify it uh, a little bit because I was involved there in a fiber show and this is a once a year happening. Fibers, textiles and wall hangings, all kinds of fiber. High, high quality by established artists, mostly Valley, Massachusetts, but beautiful work and very few, pieces sold in a month long show. Nice. I sold nothing. 
because they have a following. People know there's high quality there and they'll travel to, uh, or invest in there's people, there's collectors out there who engage with a particular artist or a style and they don't have to own a lot of, they don't have to be wealthy. They, they can be frugal and they, they, they shop wisely and they collect um, certain types of artwork or from particular artists. And so who knows who's out there? True. Uh, I, I feel that the art market is right now not that healthy because for reasons that are obvious to everybody. And I also want to give some feedback. I, had, I have exhibited a lot in the Valley, including at the Hosmer Gallery. It was a two-person show. And usually artists hang it themselves. It was re extremely well received and I sold nothing. So but you got your name out there. Anybody looks you up, they're gonna see that that bumping on online. So uh, <laughs> exposure is worth a lot. You are you're kind, Robert. I had a, a high profile show at Smith, and I'm I'm known in the valley for what for my work. It's um I don't make sales because I don't push myself. I, I'm not putting myself out anymore. Um, so that's my fault. Well, I, I hear you. At least you know. It's, yeah. not the, it's not the quality of your work. No, no. It, it's also life, life circumstances of not having a studio yeah. sometimes. And sometimes that's why, that's why galleries, that's why galleries are important because they do the selling for you. Yeah, it's true. I want to make a recommendation to you, Robert. I did not print out the handouts. Uh, last time I printed out page two, three, four, and however many there were, because when I pulled out the page, there was so much wet black ink on my page that my uh, cartridge, if, if I print all of yours out, it get, it's quite makes quite a dent with all the black real estate on it. Okay. Maybe for student handouts, Put Great recommendation. I never thought of that. Yeah, it's, a, it's a lot of ink. I have, this is teamwork. This is what we want. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for changing that in the future. Cheers. Thank you. Well, this has been fantastic. Um, I'm, I'm here for questions. I know we're flirting with our eight o'clock time, but we did go over the last time. So anybody have any questions? But again, if anybody, and I'm not reading the chat, I'm sorry. So um, I have a question about being your client. You are now servicing artists. Are you willing to talk a little bit about that aspect of your business? It's on my website and I'll talk individually. I don't want to take okay. this opportunity, but yeah. yeah, this is what part of what I do do. And mm -hmm. I, 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 I do it well, and um, uh, be yeah. Uh, contact me privately. And Good. thank you. Cheers. So you might have been at my presentation up there in Northfield a couple some years ago. No, I was not. <laughs> I'm teasing. I was not in the valley in that part of the valley anyway. All right, I'm teasing. Anybody else? <laughs> hey, this has been great. Um, I much prefer in person where I can walk around and have fun like I, I did the last time, but I enjoyed this so much. There's a lot I had to share. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody's gonna do it all or take it all in, but you get a good chunk percentage of it and you're gonna be going up to the next step. And our self-esteem and um, our ego uh, kind of trip us up in our creativity. Remember that. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. Thank you very much. Cheers. I got quite a few nuggets out of it. Great. Hey, Faith? Yeah. In the um, recording, is it possible to, to uh, see what the chat is? Um, I don't think it saves the chat. I can't remember if it saves the chat, but I think that we can, I think. You can save it. There's, there's little dots it. on the right, lower right side, are three dots, and then you can yeah. click, it says save chat. Ah. Everybody got that? Thank you. Okay. Teamwork. See, I love it. It's working all the time. Mm -hmm. Quabbin Art, Quabbin Art, Quabbin in Art Association. 
Yeah, that's Quabbin's it. a great art association. I, they've hired me to make a presentation there too. And I, I really, really like them. Okay. And there's one in Granby. Yeah, yeah, they're really good. And there's one up in uh, Shelburne Falls and one up in Montague, Orange, something or other. In Montague? That's where I live. There you go. But I don't know of an art association here. I, I think they might be at the at the mill or I'm, I'm not sure where their headquarters are. Oh, that little, that it's it's a co-op. Yeah. It's a small, it's okay. a small okay. um, brick yeah. and mortar co-op. Yeah, um, I lump them together. Yeah. yeah. Co-op art association. Is this uh, intentional that you say our Quabbin in art? The Quab is that the title? Um, the I just know, know know them as the Quabbin Art Association. Okay. I don't know what Quabbin Art Association. Good, thank you. Yeah. And the Valley Arts newsletter exists. Okay. Munson is that the uh, the Munson Library? No. It's a, it's a Munson House of Art. It's a Victorian building that the uh, Art Association leases for a dollar from Whoa. the town of Munson. Thank you. Is that the same thing as the Munson Arts Council or not? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Munson, Munson Arts Council has the um, uh, Munson House of Art. Uh -huh. It's a 11 room, two story building. And there's a hundred, it holds, I filled it three times to its capacity, 114 artworks. Ooh. Hung and never mind sculpture. <clears throat> what is ASMP higher up? Oh, that's the, for the uh, Forbes Library, the connection. Uh, the AMS, A ASMP is the magazine uh, association oh, yeah. yes. that I recommended to find out more about licensing. I'm really interested in that. Great. Are you a member of an art licensing organization yourself? I used to be um, an active member of uh, uh, ASMP working on copyright issues back when I was in Manhattan, but but not now, no. I'm a non-joiner now. Yeah. I hear they are still, uh, the Art of Licensing is also an organization that shoots me an email once in a while because I'm a member of their Facebook group, I think. Oh, yeah. The Art of Licensing. Hmm. Okay, that's great. There are books also on licensing out there, quite a few. There's a lot in the internet. Yeah, I haven't gone on lately, so I can't, I can't uh, share what, what they exactly have. Robin. There might be some at the library, or um, yeah. if there's some <clears throat> um, you recommend, Robert, that we should have in the collection to lend, let me know and I'll buy them. Okay. So I've saved the chat. Good. And um, I'll send that along as well with the video link. And I'm sorry I missed like the first couple of minutes. Thank you so much for saying we're recording this before you said anything that wasn't a recap of last week because I was like, oh yeah, we were recording this. And that's where it starts. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much, Faith. And I, again, thank you, Faith. I'm honored uh, to be considered and to be here. And um, I had, um, had a crazy schedule and, and apologies for, for those who were uh, inconvenienced by my schedule. But uh, I'm glad we have these at least recorded and we're here and we, we've done it. Thanks so much for a wonderful presentation. Very motivating, very detailed. Oh, yeah. Very motivating. Cheers. Yes. So good night and um, be in touch. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Safe home, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.